Hi. Uh, so I'm a pleasure to present uh, our speaker today, Andrea Caranti. Uh, Andrea will uh, will talk about uh, skew braces and rotobox therapy. Thank you, Dimitri, for the invitation, and thank you all for being here. So let me share my screen. And uh, okay, um, good. So. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk eventually about. Uh, uh, oh, oh, sorry, is the sound uh, okay, or should I? Okay, perfect. Okay, um, so so I, I have chosen to to tell a story of uh, my how my co-author and I uh, got to to study skew braces to be among the many people who study skew braces via this gamma function that I'm going to define, and how recently Lorenzo Stefanello and I. Uh, gave a, a, an application to Rotabaxter operators on groups. So, just a second. No, what's happening? No, sorry. It's uh, a, a little problem. Okay, now should be okay. Yes. Okay. So, um, uh, skew braces uh, have been introduced only in 2015. But uh, there are already uh, lots of uh, mathematicians uh, studying them from various uh, point of views. And uh, um, for instance, because they have many applications, for instance, uh, to finding a uh, set theoretic solution to the so-called quantum young baxter equation, and also um, application to the classifications of uh, Hopf-Galois structures. Uh, perhaps I should mention I, that I know nothing of, of Galois structures, but I've, I've worked with people who know. <laughs> so it's a, it's a team effort. And, uh, and the point from, from my point of view, I'm a group theorist by trade, uh, as few braces are in one to one correspondence with the regular subgroups of the holomorph of a group. All definitions will come in, in due time. And uh, mm, mm, skew braces. Um, uh, can be uh, described and dealt with uh, in many different ways. Uh, uh, one method uh, um, requires to study uh, certain functions that are called lambda um, by people working in skew braces. And I tend to uh, call uh, them gamma for reasons that I will explain, because I, I, I started studying this, uh, these functions uh, in a different context before skew braces were introduced, and I called them gamma and I kept the. the the, the name and, uh, and and these functions gamma are, are characterized by a certain functional equation. I will be talking about that, and and they are related to Rota Baxter operators, and you will see in due time. So let's start uh, with regular subgroups and group operations. I will start uh, with uh, with a converse of uh, the well known Cayley's uh, 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 theorem, and. Uh, Okay, yes. Uh, so uh, let's start with, uh, with a pointed set, okay? So G is a set uh, and one is a, a distinguished element in G. Uh, note that of course uh, the letter G uh, suggests that uh, we're talking groups uh, and, and one suggests that we're talking the identity, but so far there's no structure, it's just a distinguished element. And then uh, uh, you consider the, the group uh, sim G of, of permutations on G, and you call uh, a subgroup N of, of, of sim G regular if the map from N to G with sense N to, uh, to uh, the, 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 what happens when you, uh, uh, so this is my symbol for, for the value of N, which is a, 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 a permutation on, on, on G on the element one, okay? And, uh, and uh, uh, so you, you call the subgroup regular if uh, this, uh, uh, um, if this uh, uh, function is by, as a bijection. If this function is a bijection, this means uh, that uh, uh, on the one hand, n is transitive on G because this function is, uh, is uh, uh, just a second. Okay, vanish it, yes. Uh, because this function, uh, would be surjective, and so the orbit of mm. one is the whole of G. And then since it's injective, uh, this means that uh, the identity of N is the only element sending one to one, okay? Sending one to one. And, and so all stabilizers are trivial and we uh, retrieve the, the standard definition of a regular subgroup. Uh, 
So, well, but from my point of view, is it the, uh, is it the free action or, or transit? What we probably call the free action, yes, ah, exactly. Okay. So transitive and all stabilizer trivial. But uh, uh, I mean, this is conveniently described, and I will need it uh, by saying that this map is 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 a bijection. And so, if this map is a bijection, uh, uh, it has an inverse. Uh, we call which I call nu, and uh, so nu of g is the unique element of M, which uh, sends uh, uh, one to g. Is the unique solution to the yeah. equation one uh, over me. one to the n equals g? Uh, one question about uh, uh, what is exactly a stabilizer? Oh, the stabilizer is the set uh, of all elements uh, of uh, of uh, uh, n. Uh, so, okay, the stabilizer of one, say, of, of an element alpha of g, is the mm -hmm. set of all elements of n which sends alpha to, to alpha. Uh -huh. uh, you probably call it uh, uh, isotropy group or something. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the stabilizer of one alpha to alpha sends alpha to alpha. Most. So I call it stabilizer, in, but sometimes it's called isotropy group. Or, or oh, no, it's OK. It's uh, standard. No, it's OK? Yes, yes. Okay, fine. So nu is the inverse of this map, OK? So uh, nu of g is the unique element which maps 1 to g. And uh, uh, since we have this bijection from G to N, actually the, the, the bijection in both direction, um, you can use transport of structure and uh, introduce a, a, a group operation circle on G, uh, such that nu is uh, an isomorphism from G with a circle operation at N. In other words, uh, G uh, circle H is defined as nu inverse of nu G nu H. So that's typical transport of structure. Uh, so now we have a group operation on, on, on G and it's easy to see that one is the, the, the identity. And, uh, and what's the, 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 the action of nu of H on, on G? Well, uh, um, G is one to the nu of G. Nu of G, nu of H is equals nu of G circle H. And uh, one to nu of something is that something. So this is a G circle H. And this is the converse of KD's theorem because we, we have proved that every regular subgroup of uh, sim G is the, the, is the image of a, of a right regular representation. I mean, uh, nu, nu is the right regular representation of the G, of G circle, okay? Because uh, you're operating by right multiplication according to this operation circle. Now we do uh, say the direct part of, of KD's theorem. So we, we take uh, G dot, C dot, C dot uh, one to be a group. And now, I mean, keep, let's keep the, all the notation of the previous slide. So this time we have two operations on, on G, a circle operation induced by the regular subgroup N, and, and, and another group operation that we have, have given on G. Of course, they will be totally unrelated, okay? Because they, there's no reason why there should be a relation between the two. And uh, the, the, the direct part of Cayley's theorem tells you that you can take the right regular representation. So rho sends uh, an element G to the right translation by C dot. And this means that now we have two regular subgroups of uh, the symmetric group on, on G. One is N and one is rho G. And of course, they will be, in general, absolutely unrelated. So to obtain... Uh, uh, um, a, a link between, in particular, the two operations, uh, let's consider uh, the case when n, the regular subgroup, is contained, uh, unfortunately, there are two n's here, in the normalizer in the symmetric group of the image of the right regular representation. First of all, it, it's, uh, it's uh, an elementary and well-known fact uh, that this normalizer is the semi-direct product of rho g by the automorphism group of G, which is a bona fide subgroup of the symmetric group of G, because it's, after all, it's a group of permutations on G. And this I will then call the holomorph of G. Uh, this may be called the permutational holomorph because it, it lives inside uh, a, a symmetric group, uh, and it's isomorphic to the, to the classical abstract holomorph, which is the natural semi-direct product of a group G by its automorphism group, okay? So uh, let's consider the situation when N is contained in the normalizer. Of course, you might uh, be wondering why this condition one? Why should we consider this condition? 
And there are several uh, good reason to, reasons to consider this condition. Uh, so the, the condition is that this regular subgroup normalizes the image of the right regular representations of G. So it's contained uh, here. Uh, one reason, and that's where, where, where Mike Osorn and I started uh, being interested in this kind of uh, arguments, is that it occurs in cryptographic applications. So with Francesco della Volta and Massimiliano Sala, we were studying a certain group arising uh, in cryptography, and we were led to consider a billion regular subgroups of the affine group. And, uh, and, uh, and, and this condition is quite natural. I mean, uh, irregular subgroup of the affine group is exactly when N containing this, where G is elementary abelian. And this is where we first introduced gamma functions. Uh, and, and that's why I keep uh, calling them gamma, even if uh, they, they, in the most of the literature they are called lambda. I mean, I will introduce them in, in due time. And then there are applications to of Galois structures. And I was introduced to this by this collaboration with Farsno and, and Lindsay Childs. Uh, so a billion of Galois structures on pipe power Galois fields extensions. Uh, this is a generalization of this when, when the group G is a billion. Uh, perhaps I should note that uh, uh, although we will have skew braces in due time coming from, from this condition, in these two cases, uh, you don't need skew braces, but you need just the precursors of uh, skew braces, which is radical rings. Uh, I think I will skip the discussion of radical rings because the, 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 the uh, no, sorry, just a second, because uh, I don't want to, yes, okay, uh, to, because it would take too, too much time. Uh, so um, let's see how these gamma functions come out. So you have a, a regular subgroup, uh, and the new G is the, the unique element taking one to, or two G, and, and this is contained in the holomorph. It's contained in this uh, semi-direct product of G by rho G. And uh, uh, so nu of G can be uh, written as an element uh, gamma G of the automorphism group times a translation. And the translation has to be the translation by G because remember this element takes one to G and gamma G is an automorphism, so it takes one to one. So it's a translation that has to take the to do the job of bring, taking one to G. And of course, gamma is, is a function from G to the automorphism group of G. And then uh, let's do a simple calculation. Uh, what's uh, nu of G circle H? Uh, nu is an isomorphism between this of, uh, uh, G with the circle operation and N itself. Um, so nu of G and nu of H can be written like this. Uh, we reorder, we take uh, this gamma H to the, to, to the left, uh, and of course, uh, we, we have to do, to do a conjugation. So here's the conjugation. And, uh, and then you use the, the properties of translations. Uh, you can bring this in, so you obtain this. And, uh, and, and this is uh, a, a, another element. This is an element of, of, of N, okay? Because it's new of something. And uh, so it has to be new of this element because uh, that's how you recognize which element it is from the translation. And so this is new of this. So you, you use this formula again and, uh, and you have gamma of this times rho of this. Now let's look at, at two consequences of these uh, calculations. Let's look first at the blue parts. Remember, nu is a bijection, so this means that G circle H can be expressed like this. So th this circle operation, which came from the regular subgroup N, can be expressed in terms of gamma H. More about this on the next slide. And then if you look at the, the orange part, you obtain uh, this uh, functional equation for gamma, and it's an easy fact to see that this, functional, this equation characterizes the function gamma that appears in this place. So if you want to study regular subgroups of the holomorph, you can, if you wish, study the, the functions gamma from, from G to the automorphism group, which satisfy this functional equation. It's easy to see that the converse holds, okay? So we have a, a, a one more tool to study these situations. But now let's see how skew braces come in, because uh, gamma is a function from G to the automorphism group. In particular, each value of gamma is an endomorphism. So, if you apply, I, I write these uh, functions as exponent. If you apply gamma over element C to a product AB, it will uh, 
it will give you this. It's, a, it's an endomorphism of G with respect to, 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 to C dot. Now, we, we have seen in the previous slide that uh, there is this link between the circle operation induced by the regular subgroup N and the gamma function. And then you can rewrite, if you wish, the action of gamma C on, uh, on X uh, like this. Note, this is the inverse with respect to the C dot. So what we are doing, we are first taking X and multiplying on the right by C with respect to the operation circle, and then taking the inverse with respect uh, to the operation C dot. And of course, this won't cancel in general, cancel out because the, 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 the inverse will be different. I mean, the, the, the operation is different. But then you can rewrite this, simply you, you use this to rewrite this and you obtain this, okay? If you wish, you want, you can erase this. And this is exactly the axiom for a right cube race, okay? Meaning a right cube race is a group, is a set G with two group operations, which has linked by this. And from the point of view of gamma functions, you are simply stating that the values of the gamma are endomorphisms. And, and then the, the other axiom of the skew brace uh, correspond to other properties of gamma. For instance, uh, the functional equation of gamma corresponds more or less to the associativity of the circle operation. So we have introduced skew braces via the gamma functions. Uh, good. Uh, so there is a, 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 let's see what you can do with this. There is a, um, quite uh, I'm a, sorry, I'm uh, uh, if it, could, could you uh, just illustrate this construction on the example uh, of the skew brace, which, uh, which came from uh, the exactly uh, decomposable group. You, you see, uh, uh, so what, what is the gamma function in this case? Okay, so uh, that's the, the gamma function, which is, which is uh, uh, if I remember correctly, it's written in one of the papers. Uh, the identity on 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 one uh, on one uh, um, component and uh, conjugation by the inverse on an element on the other component. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, and it, this is equivalent to to. I mean. It, this is something we wrote in a paper with the, the Corso and Campedella, but it was already in the literature of skew braces and had been uh, rewritten by Bardakov and Gubarev, for instance. Uh, the, the, it's something that keeps being uh, rediscovered. Um, yes, that's, uh, yes, I think that's uh, the correct uh, thing. I don't have a slide for this, sorry. Okay. okay. Uh, thank um, thank so th there is uh, quite uh, some literature, particularly by, by Russian authors, on groups having the same holomorph. This is a rather ambiguous term. So let's uh, let's see. Oh, and Timothy Cole was the one who who has started working again on, on this recently. And now I've contributed with other authors to with Francesca La Volta to the problem. And uh, Cindy Tsang is doing also some very nice uh, work. So strictly speaking, having the same holomorph means the following. Suppose you have uh, G and the regular subgroup of N. And then you say that G and N have the same holomorph. If the holomorph of G, which is this normalizer, corresponds to the normalizer of N in the symmetric group. Um, so it, it can be seen that, uh, that, that uh, also this, this normalizer, if N is regular, is also isomorphic to the holomorph of N. It's not equal, as in the case of the regular representations, of the right regular representation of G, but still it's, it's, uh, it's isomorphic. And, but if you add the condition that G and N are isomorphic, or if you wish that rho G and rho NN are isomorphic, then you can exploit uh, a, a result of uh, quite an old result of Miller, which says uh, that uh, if you have two regular subgroup of a symmetric group, say rho G and N, if they are isomorphic, then they are conjugate. Or more precisely, every isomorphism between the two of them is the restriction of co a certain conjugation of an inner automorphism. And, uh, and so if G and N are isomorphic, uh, rho G and, and N are, are conjugate. And of course, an element that conjugates rho G to N conjugate this to this, the reason it normalizes this because the two are equal. And so you obtain that uh, this multiple, so-called multiple holomorph, the normalizer or the normalizer rho G acts transitively by conjugation on a set of the regular subgroups of CMG, which are isomorphic to N and then the same holomorph. 
and uh, if you keep in mind that uh, that the stabilizer of uh, of uh, rho of g is is this normalizer you obtain that this quotient group acts uh, uh, regularly on the set of regular subgroups uh, let me repeat that are isomorphic to to g and have the same holomorph okay and so this this group uh, it, it has quite some interest uh, i mean it's been studied by several authors and then and, and, um, Timothy Cole and other people, including myself, have been studying it uh, um, also recently. And uh, in studying, uh, of course, uh, uh, I mean, I have some sort of obsession for these gamma functions. So how do you study this in terms of gamma? Um, so so uh, we have here that uh, these two normalizers are the same. So in particular, N is normal here. So N is normal here, okay? So you have that N is normal in the holomorph of G. And then, of course, you have a stronger condition. But uh, I mean, uh, it seems to me that uh, studying this uh, weaker condition first uh, is somewhat uh, uh, the, the, the right approach. Uh, and this translates in a very strong uh, property of the gamma functions. So the gamma function that correspond to this particular regular subgroups, those who are normal in the holomorph, are equivalent for automorphism of G. You will see the, the consequences uh, of this strong assumption in a second. And then once you have the, the, found this gamma, you, you try and find uh, those that satisfy the additional conditions, but we won't go into the details. So this is weaker than the condition of having the same holomorph, but it, in a sense is more manageable. Let me mention, yes, uh, what, the, what does this condition mean in terms of skew braces? It means that uh, you have this group with these two operations, but there is a stronger, relation because the automorphisms of the first operations are also automorphisms with respect to the second operation. This is an easy consequence of this. And this is uh, uh, interesting in the, in, the case, in the abelian case because, I mean, I won't go into the details, uh, but it leads to the study which uh, Francesca Dalla Volta and I did in this paper of the commutative rings in which an automorphism of the additive group alone is also not uh, an automorphism of the ring. And this is a quite uh, restricted uh, assumption, uh, which I don't think had been studied in the literature, but perhaps there is in the literature, I don't know. But, but it comes from this. I mean, this condition really translates uh, into this condition that is probably of some interest. Good. Now let's, uh, let's uh, move to perfect groups, uh, because this uh, shows how um, my authors and I uh, became interested in gamma function that take value in the inner automorphism group. And then from that, you, you get to Rota Baxter uh, operators. Okay, so uh, gamma functions are characterized by this functional equation. Of course, you can do a change of variables and, and rewrite it as this. So you replace G to gamma H by uh, with with g and then of course uh, g here becomes g gamma h inverse uh, suppose that gamma has this equivariance problem uh, property okay that comes from uh, from this uh, same uh, holomorph uh, then uh, uh, look up uh, the gamma, uh, value of gamma on on the product gh it's uh, this, I mean, I'm just copied this thing. And then since it's equivariant, you can take uh, this gamma H inverse out of gamma. Uh, here it is. Now this is a conjugation in the automorphism group. This expands uh, to this conjugate. And of course, these two cancel out. And you have obtained that gamma is an anti-homomorphism from G to the automorphism group. And, uh, and the, in particular, uh, gamma respect the inverse, okay? So the functional equation uh, implies, if you have this strong uh, assumption of equivariance, uh, that these functions gamma are anti-homomorphies. And of course, anti-homomorphies are, are easier to deal with that these uh, elements satisfying this functional equation. Now let's introduce a function that will uh, play an important role in the following. And, and this is uh, simply a complicated way of, of, of associating to the element G, the function conjugation by G, okay? So this is the function that, uh, that takes G to the map that takes X to the conjugate G inverse XG. Okay, so let's see what happens when under the assumption that uh, I've taken so far, you compute the G on a commutator. 
in the group. So you can write the commutator as G inverse and then G conjugate with H. And so I write, uh, instead of uh, writing G conjugate uh, with H, I, start, uh, I, I write yota of H applied to G because yota of H after all is conjugation by H. Why is this useful? Because first of all, the gammas uh, we, we are using are anti-homomorphic, so I can, uh, uh, I can write, uh, translate uh, like this, and I take the inverse out. And then these gammas are equivalent. So I can take this automorphism, this is the inner automorphism used by H, out of the parentheses. And what I get, I get this, okay? And uh, uh, this is nothing as the commutator between the yota of H and inner automorphism, conjugation by H, and this thing. Since the, inner, the group of inner automorphism is normal in the automorphism group, this is an inner automorphism as well. It's a commutator after all. And this is exactly the, the, the inner automorphism induced by this commutator. This commutator should be taken in the abstract holomorph for G. So we, what we have found that uh, the value of gamma, this particular gamma, which are equivalent and so on, on a commutator are inner automorphisms. That's uh, where uh, we first found uh, uh, these gammas with value in the inner automorphisms. So in particular, if the group is perfect, so the group is generated by commutators, you have that all gamma function of regular subgroup having the same holomorph take values in the inner automorphism group. So in this group, in perfect groups, uh, this holds uh, for, for, for all values of gamma because, uh, because G is generated by a commutator. So it's perfect groups, which uh, Francesca Lavolta and I uh, dealt uh, with in, in this uh, paper, that um, introduce uh, Francesca and I to, uh, to uh, gamma functions taking inner, uh, take value in the inner automorphism group. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, talk of, of bicycle braces. We are uh, closing in on the, the application. So um, Lindsay Childs had defined a brace to be, a skew brace to be a bicycle brace if it remains a skew brace even when you exchange the two operations. Okay, and uh, I have written um, something about this in particular in terms of the regular subgroups of the holomorph. And uh, it can be seen that by skew braces are characterized in terms of gamma functions, uh, my obsession, as you know, by any, by two or three of these identities. So one is the, the, the functional equation defining the functions gamma. The second one tells you that gamma is an anti-homomorphism. And the third one is, uh, is, uh, tells you that gamma is, uh, so to say, self-equivalent. That is, you can take the value of gamma b out of the parentheses. So, I mean, uh, uh, when, we, when we had n normally in, uh, in the holomorph of G, then you can, could took out of gamma any automorphisms here. So in particular, all regular subgroups, which are normal in all G, uh, give example of this kind. So, Every subgroup N, which is normal in the holomorph, yields, yields a bicycle brace. And I put these two equations in color because, uh, I mean, uh, since they, they, they immediately imply the dysfunctional equation, these are probably easier to deal with uh, instead of this uh, functional equation. And uh, so let's go back to a pointed set. Let n, n, n be two regular subgroups of uh, sim G. And uh, as explained in the, the first few slides, uh, uh, suppose that, that, that they give two operations C dot and circle on the set G uh, with the, the, the transport of structure we have, we have mentioned. And then the following are equivalent. The, the first one is that this is a cube race. And the second one is that n and n normalize each other. This follows uh, immediately for, from what I said before, because the, uh, to say that the, the, the G circle dot is a skew brace uh, means that N normalizes N. And so if it's a by skew, it means that you can revert the order of operations. So the two normalize each other. So you can speak, you can describe this phenomenon in terms of a skew brace, an operation, or you can define it, uh, describe it purely in terms of regular subgroups normalizing each other. And uh, there is a, a, an object that has been studied in particular at Timothy Cole and also a student of mine, Filippo Spaggiari, I consider a particular case, 
um, an object that is called the that I call the normalizing graph. But as you will see, this has already appeared in a diff under a different name. So this is an undirected graph in which the vertices are the regular subgroup of the symmetric group. And you join two vertices to regular subgroup by an undirected edge if they normalize each other. So, um, as I said, regular subgroups joined by an edge. There is a, uh, if, you, if you look on the archive, the, the, there is a, a, a nice preprint by, by Filippo Spaggiari in, in which he draw, he consider a very particular case, but he has some very beautiful graphs and also the proofs uh, that the graphs are what you expect to be. There are some very nice configuration. But uh, it has to be said that uh, this graph has been, well, in a sense, this graph, this graph has been mentioned by Timothy Cole, but uh, Alan Koch uh, has described this in terms of brace blocks. So I, I, I've described this graph in terms of, of regular subgroups, but you can, uh, you can uh, uh, describe it in, in terms of, of uh, skew braces. Let's see how. Uh, I'm sorry, Andrea, uh, for, for, for a final set, is, no. is graph related to the Brewer order? No, I, I have no idea. Sorry, sorry. I simply don't know. It might be, but I'm very ignorant of those stuff. I mean, um, you, I mean, you know more about that. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, but please, I mean, I'm, I'm very grateful for you, for you, to you for your questions and uh, and ask, uh, I mean, anybody, please ask me questions whenever you, you want. I mean, I'm I'm not here to listen to my voice, but, uh, but uh, to <laughs> oh, hopefully to elicit a response. Okay. That's so, uh, Koch studied this graph from the point of view of brace blocks. And, and you see the name Baxter has started appearing. Um, so, um, Koch studies it from this point of view. Suppose we have a pointed set and the family of group operations on G is said to be a brace block if if you take any two operations then what you obtain is a bisque brace and uh, given the correspondence i i, I gave uh, in the previous slide one can see that as brace block corresponds to a clique that is to a complete subgraph in the normalizing graph it's it's just a different way of uh, of looking at it and uh, uh, but they are absolutely equivalent because of this correspondence between operations and regular subgroups what uh, i mean this Converse of uh, KD's theorem that I was discussing in the first uh, two slides. And uh, Lorenzo and I uh, gave a contribution, uh, which in some sense generalizes what, uh, what uh, Koch has done. Uh, so let's see uh, what Koch has done. Uh, Koch has studied certain gamma function that takes values in the inner automorphism group. We, I mean, at least from our point of view, he, he wrote this differently, but that's the, 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 the point. So a theme that we have already seen appear in, in, in perfect groups. So uh, Koch uh, studies gamma function of this form, where psi is an ondomorphism of G with an abelian image, okay? And uh, uh, what Koch uh, show, uh, recall that Yota, no, well, okay, Yota will come later. Uh, yes, so no, sorry, Yota is here. So Yota sends an element to conjugation by to the inner automorphism induced by G. Koch uh, showed that if you take any of these uh, functions, these are gamma functions, and uh, uh, if you define the circle operation as, as before in terms of this gamma function, then G circle, uh, G C dot circle is a bis cube brace. Okay, so the corresponding regular subgroups normalize each other. For, for, for uh, gamma's function of this uh, form, where psi is an endomorphism in an abelian image. Moreover, it showed that, uh, uh, so you, you have started with a, uh, with a group with an operation C dot, uh, and you introduce this function gamma, and you introduce another group operation circle. Uh, but psi, which is an endomorphism of G C dot, say, is also an endomorphism of G circle. And uh, Psi has also an abelian image as an endomorphism of G C dot, uh, the circle. And so you can repeat the argument because the argument uh, works when you have an endomorphism of a group with an abelian image, but these properties are repeated for G circle. And then you can iterate the construction and you get a sequence of group operations 
and any two of these operations will give you a, a bias skew brace. So you get a brace block. So uh, you start with C dot and, and construct a, a, a circle with this. And then you repeat with the circle, you obtain an operation with you may call circle index two, and so on. And any two of these operations will give you a bias skew brace. So you, you obtain say, a, a, a brace block, a, a complete subgraph of, of, uh, of uh, bias skew brace. So Lorenzo and I generalize this. Uh, so there are two colors here. The, the, the real important color is uh, the orange one. Uh, there are also certain bilinear map, but you can safely ignore them. Uh, so what we do is the following. Uh, we take uh, a group G and then subgroup K and A, where K is central, so in particular it's normal. And the quotient A over K is abelian. So this generalizes the, the Koch situation in which you may say K is one. So we don't have necessarily A to be abelian, but this quotient to, over a certain K is abelian. And then uh, you consider all the endomorphisms of C over K, which map, uh, which have image in this abelian uh, subgroup, okay? All endomorphisms, not just one. And this is a ring under uh, pointwise operation. And then, uh, but you can safely ignore this. I'll, I'll tell you in a second why we consider this. You consider also the bilinear maps uh, uh, from G to K, which have K in both the left and right kernel. Then, okay, this is a bad notation. Let, so let me explain. Psi is an endomorphism of G over K. So Psi properly operates on a, on a, on a, uh, on a coset. What I mean here, we have a, a more complicated uh, um, notation in the paper with Lorenzo, but it means, uh, uh, you see, uh, if you take a coset GK here and its image here, they, uh, I mean, the, the, you obtain a coset with respect to K and K is in the center. So uh, each element of the coset, uh, which is the image of GK under Psi, we like by conjugation in the same way because they differ by an element of the center. So although uh, psi need not uh, lift to an endomorphism of psi of, of G, it's just an endomorphism of G over K, uh, this is well defined. No matter which representative you choose for this element, which is uh, um, uh, ill defined, then when you conjugate, uh, this is well defined because, because the, all the elements you may choose differ by elements in the center, okay? So you take this and you add this bilinear map, but you can safely forget it. And, uh, and, and then you obtain uh, that all, any two operation of this form yield uh, a bias cube brace. Uh, and so this is the generalization which will be needed in the example at the end, uh, um, in which, as I said, uh, we take uh, not just uh, as Koch does uh, endomorphism with value in in endomorph in, a, in an abelian subgroup, but uh, uh, but this only holds in a quotient, and then you lift we lift it, then and, and we get uh, a lot of, of skew braces. So all these operations yield a brace block, and then we have also a, an iteration method, and, and that's uh, where we need the the bilinear maps because you can iterate this construction. And even if you start without these bilinear maps uh, uh, iterating, you get these bilinear maps uh, as central commutators. But this is not important. I mean, we in the following, we will only need to, to use this particular uh, gamma function. So let me just uh, repeat it once more. Uh, so this G psi means uh, you take the concept GK here, you consider the, 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 the image under psi, which is a concept of, of K. And this means, uh, conjugate with any element in this coset. I mean, the, 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 the value is the same for all the, the, the elements as K lies in the center. Good, and uh, let's, uh, and here we finally mention Rotterbachser operator. So um, I know very little, I was discussing the, with Dimitri in the beginning, I know very little on, on uh, Rotterbachser operators, but apparently they start with this paper in uh, 1960 of uh, Glenn Baxter for uh, commutative rings. And, uh, and then there is a long story. And then uh, uh, these three authors uh, uh, studied it for Lie groups and Lie algebras. 
And uh, Bardakov and Gubarev uh, uh, have studied uh, the connection, which we'll see in a second, to left braces, two skew braces. And also, the, the oh, sorry, um, in, in the original title, it spelled out Rota Baxter, Young Baxter. I have shortened this uh, to fit for, for references in a, in a page. Okay, so this Rota Baxter and so on. And, uh, and Lorenzo and I have given a contribution, and, and, and uh, the, the rest of the, my talk is devoted to explaining the, the, our contribution. And in particular, we are going to review this, this, uh, this construction of Bardakov and Gubarev. So what's a Rotabaxter operator on a group? Uh, this is probably a Rotabaxter operation of, or operator of weight minus one or one, and, but, but to me, it's just a plain Rotabaxter operator. It's a map from G to G, which satisfied this functional equation where uh, G to B of H means conjugation, okay? So uh, B of uh, G conjugated via B of H times H is the product BG, BH. Now this, recalls very much the functional equation for gamma. So when we saw uh, the, the, the when, uh, when we discovered the Rotterbaxter operator, Lorenzo and I discovered the Rotterbaxter operator, we said, okay, yeah, I mean, it's uh, very much like gamma, except that gamma takes values in the automorphous group. And, and this is a map from G to G. But so how do you fix this? Well, there is a natural way of doing this because, uh, because you can apply Yota. Uh, which, uh, let's see. So uh, you have a, a Rotterbaxter operator. This is a function from uh, G to G satisfying this uh, condition. And then you have the famous Yota, which takes uh, an element of the group to the inner automorphism, uh, which is conjugation by G. So if you compose the two, you get a function from uh, G to the automorphism group, actually to the inner automorphism group. And uh, and so this condition translates immediately to this condition. So you get a gamma function. So a Rotterbaxter operation on a group yields naturally a gamma function. And in particular, it yields a skew brace, okay? And uh, recall that Yota is the, the I, should have, uh, I should have recalled this uh, two lines earlier, but it takes G to conjugation by G. Okay, so once more, uh, a Rotterbaxter operator is a map from G to G, composed with Yota, and you end up in the inner automorphism group. And so the, compo the, the, the composite is, the composition of these two maps is a gamma function because this functional equation translates immediately to this functional equation. Could you say something in the inverse direction? And that's the point, that's the point. And uh -huh. the rest of, uh, the, of the rest of the, the, the talk is devoted uh, to exactly to the converse direction. Uh, I assume that you were interested in, 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 in this. And so it was natural for Lorenzo and I, and myself, uh, to ask uh, what about the converse? Of course, you had to start with a gamma function taking value in the inner automorphism group, otherwise you have no chance, okay? So if you have such a gamma function, does it come from a Rotterbaxter operator or more precisely, can you find the, the Rotterbaxter operation from which it comes from if it comes from a, such a Rotterbaxter operator? And uh, this uh, boils down to uh, what we discovered to be a classical result, uh, uh, which is this is an exercise in, uh, in uh, uh, Brown's book on cohomology of groups. And this is done with pullbacks uh, and, uh, and uh, sequences and diagrams, uh, uh, let, let me show you a concrete version of this. It's a very elementary fact, but it's extremely useful. So suppose you have two groups and you have an abelian normal subgroup of the second one. And then there's a very natural situation. Suppose you have a morphism from U to the quotient. When is it that you can lift it to a morphism from U to V? What's the condition? So let's do it in absolutely concrete terms. So uh, first of all, note that A is a subgroup of V as abelian. So it's a V module is under conjugation. Okay, fair enough. And then since A is abelian, uh, A does nothing by conjugation on itself. So it's also a V slash A module, okay, as A is abelian. And then via phi, 
uh, A becomes also a U module. So essentially, what's the action on A of an element of U? You, you take the element of U, apply phi, uh, phi, you obtain an element of this, and this uniquely defined a, a conjugation, okay? So now A is a U module. Okay, so you want to try and lift phi to a morphine from U to B. First, you do it roughly. You simply lift phi to a map, any map, from U to B. It means you, uh, phi of U will be a coset, and you choose a representative for the coset, okay? So you have lifted uh, this to, to a map from U to B, but of course, uh, this map is not necessarily a morphism. Uh, why is not a morphism? Because it's a morphism only modulo A, so it will be a morphism corrected by a term, okay? Because, uh, because uh, the, the, there is a term in, in U. So phi, phi is a morphism, but here you have A. So it has to be corrected by a function of X, uh, of, of the two, of the two uh, variables X and Y in U, okay? Which is a function from U to U, uh, from U times U to A. So you have lifted uh, uh, phi to what you can do, uh, to a map. And of course, this won't be a morphine because th there's this factor that uh, disturbs the, the... So if this factor vanishes, then you have a morphine and you have lifted uh, phi. But uh, so C is this lift. And uh, it satisfied this condition with the correction, OK? Now, enforce associativity. There is compute this uh, element in, I mean, after all, uh, operation on U is associative. So compute this in two different ways. I'll spare you the calculation. But uh, if you compute the, 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 this in two different ways, you obtain the kappa, the, the uh, correcting factor is a two cycle. The, 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 the calculation is absolutely straightforward. And it shows you that this is a two cycle. Okay? Um, you simply use uh, this uh, four times. I mean, essentially, uh, only here you start with x, y, and z, and here you start with, with this. Note that uh, this cycle kappa of course, uh, depends on the, your choice of C, because after all, C is any lift, lifting, and there are many, okay? But you can see, again, it, it's absolutely straightforward that the cohomology class of this cycle in H2 of U of A, remember that A is a module, and a U module in a natural way, is independent of C, okay? Uh, this, again, it's, it's absolutely straightforward. So you have obtained, and, and, and then you can, you can do the, this in a more uh, refined way with, with uh, diagrams, uh, that uh, to uh, amorphous phi from U to V uh, over A, you have associated a cohomology class in, uh, uh, in H2 U of A. And then, again, it's, not, uh, it's absolutely straightforward to see that the condition for phi to lift to a morphine from U to V is absolutely equivalent to saying that the class of kappa is trivial in the second cohomology group. Essentially, because it tells you that uh, this uh, uh, that you can correct C by a function from uh, from uh, uh, U to A to get rid of this factor, and then you obtain a, a, a morphism. So, so far. Uh, we have translated this problem, uh, problem to lifting a morphine to a, a problem in cohomology. Now I will apply this to our gamma functions. And then we will see that at least from the point of view of Lorenzo and myself, uh, this is a fruitful uh, thing because I mean, uh, after all, the, the, the nice thing of H2 is that it has many interpretations. So one interpretation in this, it controls whether the morphine lifts or not. And then we will be reinterpreted it in terms of splitting sequences. And we found that this is a, is a useful point of view. But first of all, let's review this in our particular situation. So you start with a gamma function that takes value in the inner automorphism group of a G. And you want to know whether this comes or not from a rota baxter operator. And recall that uh, there is uh, this associated, oh, sorry, this associated uh, 
group operation, okay, a circle defined like this. And then, okay, so gamma is a homomorphy from G circle to in G, because uh, the, the, functional, the gamma functional equation tells you that gamma of this is gamma of G, gamma of H. So uh, the, the functional equation and this, uh, and this fact tells you that gamma is a homomorphism here. And then uh, the inner automorphic group is auto isomorphic to the quotient of G over the center. This comes from Yota. I mean, Yota goes from G to the inner automorphic group, and then the curl is uh, the, the, the center. So we get an isomorphic here. So you have a morphism of G circle to in G. That's the functional equation. You have this isomorphism here. You compose, and you get phi. And now we have the situation of the previous slides, a morphism from this group, recall with circle operation. G has also a C dot operation, but here is the circle operation that, uh, that counts uh, to a quotient of a group, okay? And uh, our problem is exactly uh, the following. I mean, a lift of this will be exactly a Rotterbaxter operator. Note that uh, in passing that Z of G will be a trivial module from this group because the, 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 the action of this on Z G is obtained by first applying this map and then conjugating. This is the center, so it will be trivial. So let's do exactly for this particular situation what we did in the, on the previous slide. First of all, you lift this phi to a map uh, from G to G. And this means that gamma G will be yota of C of G, because yota is, after all, is involved here, OK? This uh, function C will satisfy the following, that this function C, C of this will be, well, of course, this is conjugation by CH. So this is yota of C of H, because this is simply a rewriting, OK? But why is this important? Because this yota is gamma, okay? So this is C of C of G to gamma H of H. So this is C of G uh, circle H. We would like this to be uh, G, uh, C of G, C of H, but the point is we need the correction factor, okay? Because, uh, because uh, uh, the, 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 there's a yota here. So gamma is, is a, so, so phi is a morphism, and gamma is uh, the morphism here, but here we have yota. So um, uh, if you take the yota away, you, you have an element in the center. So exactly as in the previous situation, you have a two cos cos cycle where ZG is a trivial module. And you see the situation is exactly what we wanted because if we can get rid of this, of this cos cycle, then C is a, is a Rotterbaxer operator. And so you see where, where I'm aiming, uh, again, uh, this uh, depends on the uh, choice of C, but this class in the cohomology group it does not. This is exactly a reprise of what we, I said in the previous slide. And the proposition now tells you that gamma comes from a Rotterbaxter operator. This gamma is, is uh, yota of BG, if and only if this cosicos is trivial. Okay. So uh, lifting this function, lifting gamma, to a Rotterbaxter operator is absolutely equivalent to the, the previous general situation of lifting a morphism and is uh, equivalent to uh, proving, uh, to showing that this cosicos is trivial in the second cohomology group. And now the approach, so this is a characterization in terms of cohomology of uh, those gamma functions that can be lifted to a Rotterbaxter operator. So in one sense, from Rotterbaxter to gamma, you can always do, uh, what about the converse? You need this to be trivial. But what Lorenzo and I found interesting that uh, you can now reinterpret this, the absolutely standard stuff uh, in terms of the splitting of sequences. And this is, uh, uh, we believe this to be a useful way. So let's consider as we do in our paper, the Eisenberg group of all the P cube. So P is an odd prime and you have a group of exponent P in which uh, um, uh, K is a central element. This means that uh, this commutator is trivial in this presentation, and the commutator of U and V is K, okay? And, uh, and, and now, okay, I'm using the, the notation of, uh, of uh, 
several slides ago, but I mean, um, I cannot pretend you to remember the details. So uh, you have this group G and you have K, which is the center is generated by this uh, commutator K. And, and of course, since this group is, 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 is plus two, I mean, modulo, modulo uh, this, it's a billion. So A over K is a billion, okay? But of course, uh, the group itself is not a billion. There is a commutator which is not trivial. Take the endomorphism of this abelian group given by uh, raising to the alpha power. For simplicity, I, I write this in the, the integers modulo p. Uh, this is the, 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 okay, so this is endomorphism because the quotient of g over k is abelian. So rise, raising to the power is, is definitely an endomorphism. And then define a gamma function as we did before in this way iota of g of psi. This is, again, is this uh, notation that is not particularly good, but uh, again, uh, you take a coset gk, you, you, you take this value here, and uh, no matter which element uh, you take in this coset, uh, the, the, the conjugation by this will be the same because k is, is exactly the center, it's contained in the center, okay? And now, so you, you have gamma functions, and you may wonder whether uh, they come from uh, a Rotabaxter operator or not. Uh, uh, this is a yota of something. So I, I, the value of gamma, it's an inner automorphism. And uh, you find uh, the, the following. I, I'll, I'll be describing the details of this in the next slides. When alpha is different from minus one half, uh, prime is odd, so this makes sense. The gamma function comes from a Rotabaxter operator and actually from this explicit Rotabaxter operator. I want to do the calculations, but I will show you how uh, uh, looking at sequences allows you to find this with no effort, with, with very little effort, okay? When alpha is minus one half, then the gamma function does not come from a Rotterbaxter operator. I will tell you, I will show you how this, uh, this work. But first, let me mention a, 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 a little detail. What's so special about alpha be, being minus one half? Uh, that uh, uh, in this case, uh, G circle, okay, the, the circle operation associated with this gamma is a billion. This comes from, uh, 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 yes, I think I have the time, so I will show you in the next slide, is, a, is another observation by Baer, but it's really a, a very particular case of the Lazar correspondence and of the baker campbell Ausdorf formula, okay? Let's, uh, I have the time, so I won't skip Baer. So Baer, in this uh, 38 paper, uh, show the, the following. So suppose you have a group of the potence class two admitting unique square roots. Uh, for instance, uh, a, a, a P group, a finite P group when P is odd, then uh, square roots uh, exist and are unique. Define a, a circle operation by this. You correct the operation by this commutator raised to the minus one half. I mean, after all, there are square roots. And then, uh, G circle is an abelian group. Let me show you the extreme elementary calculation. You compute H circle G. This is by definition H uh, C dot G H G. Uh, so you exchange H and G and the price to pay is a commutator. So it, here you have exponent one and here minus one half. So this is uh, HD to one half, but this is a group on this potent class two. So when you, uh, so the commutator is an anti-symmetric function. If you exchange the, the H and G, you obtain exactly G H to minus one half. So you obtain G circle H. So you see this group has become a billion. As I said, this is a very special case of the baker campbell Astor formula, which is uh, okay. And this will play a role in the following because Let's do the following. Consider the standard sequence associated to the cocycle kappa. Know that this is just a set. It's just a set of pairs. I will define the, oper the, the group operation on this in a second. And remember that ZG is a trivial module for, for a G circle. So this uh, operates trivially uh, here. So the operation is the following. Uh, so, uh, the, the, so on the on the second component, you you uh, you use circle as the operation. On the first, you use the natural operation of the of ZG. But then there's a correction because you you put the kappa here, okay, 
Uh, so you have a cocycle kappa, you put the cocycle here. The, the, the cocycle has value in Z of G, so you have to put it on the left, uh, leftmost uh, uh, term. And this is the standard uh, uh, sequence, uh, exact sequence associated to, to this uh, cocycle. Now, if the extent, extension does not split, this means that K is non-trivial in the cohomology. That's uh, a characterization of the, the of the of this uh, um, cohomology class. I mean, uh, of splitting through the cohomology, and then we know that gamma does not come from a rota Baxter operator. So the translation is this: you construct this operator. I mean, you start uh, with, the, with with your uh, gamma, you construct uh, uh, your kappa, you construct the extension, and then you forget about the rota Baxter. You simply look whether this splits or not. If you find that this that, that not split then gamma does not come from um, rota Baxter operator, because this means that kappa is non-trivial, OK? And I'll show you in, in this particular example how you can do that. If the extension does split, then this means that kappa is trivial. And then uh, uh, I, I, I'm not going into the details, which are uh, elementary in a way, uh, because it's uh, just uh, not, don't want to do too many calculations. But uh, a complement to ZG, will give you natural, naturally a co-boundary, which is the correction that you have to make to C to get rid of this, of this component. So this is constructive. It means if, the, if it does split, you get a complement, and the complement tell you, OK, correct C by this particular co-boundary, and you will get rid of this. And so you get a lot of Baxter operator. So it's a constructive approach. How does this work in practice? OK, so. Consider this sequence um, with the product uh, for the Eisenberg group. And then you find that uh, if you consider the commutator of uh, the pairs 1u, 1v, so u and v are elements of, of this, uh, of the second factor, okay, of the second factor, then it's, uh, it's not uh, difficult to see that you obtain this pair here, okay? where kappa is, is uh, an element that lives here because the, the center of G is generated by K and lives also here in, in, the, in the rightmost part because uh, of course uh, uh, it's, it's an element of G circle. So let, you, you see that there's a one plus two alpha here. So that's where the minus one half comes in play. If alpha is min minus one half, uh, then this vanishes, okay? Uh, perhaps I'll use a, a, a pen here, just a second that I have to find the pen. Uh, yes, draw. Just a second, let me see. Okay, uh, this should be a pen. So this is one. No, okay, no, fine. I, I can, I'm unable to use the pen, anyway. So alpha is minus one half, so this has vanished, okay? I claim that the second the sequence does not, not split. There are at least two good ways for, for this. Uh, know that if this vanishes, this does not, OK? Because if, if alpha is minus 1 half, this does not vanish. But then this means that this, uh, this uh, uh, group uh, with a particular operation is not abelian. But in this case, G circle is abelian. When alpha is minus 1 half, that's Baer's construction. This is abelian. And so if the, if the sequence splits, uh, consider this is a, is a trivial model, then it's a direct product. And then it's a billion because this is a billion, this is a billion. So the sequence can, cannot possibly split, okay? Because otherwise it would be a billion. Whereas this does not vanish, sorry, this does not vanish. And so it's not a billion. Another way of seeing that the sequ sequence does not split is that uh, since this vanishes when alpha is minus one half, uh, you have that, that, uh, that uh, this center is uh, contained in the derived subgroup because uh, this does not vanish. But then after all, uh, this is a group of order, a final group of order p to the fourth. Uh, so a complement of this uh, would be a, a subgroup of order p cube, a maximal subgroup. And we know that the maximal subgroups in a finite p group contain the frattini, contain the derived subgroup. So it cannot split because a complement uh, with, uh, should contain the derived subgroup, whereas this derived subgroup lies outside it. So group theoretic considerations uh, allow you to say that you cannot lift uh, this to, to a rota Baxter operator. But I mean, we have translated the acomology this to, to the splitting or not of a, of a sequence. What happens when alpha is different from minus half? Then both, then this does not vanish. 
okay? Um, and this means that if you consider the subgroup generated by these two elements, this consists, uh, this is a group of order P cube uh, generated by this two element and this commutator. And this commutator, since this is non-trivial these times when alpha is different from minus one half, intersects the, the center, the, the, this trivially, okay? Because there's something outside it. And so this is a component of the center, okay? Because it intersects trivially. And, and this time there's nothing wrong because uh, G circle is not abelian anymore. So you get a splitting of ZG times this complement, which is still isomorphic to the Eisenberg group. Uh, but the, 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 the whole group is not a billion because the Eisenberg group is not a billion. And uh, I'll spare you the computation. Uh, 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 the, the sequence splits explicitly, meaning that uh, from uh, the knowledge of the complement, you can extract uh, the uh, co-boundary, which uh, corrects uh, your lifting of uh, the gamma function to make it uh, a Rotterbuster operator. So it's really a constructive approach via the cohomology. And, uh, and let me stress one more that uh, uh, the cohomology characterization is relatively straightforward because it's a standard, it's, as I said, it's a, an exercise in Brown. Uh, but then you can use it uh, uh, conveniently, I mean, at least that's uh, what Lorenzo and I think, because you translate this via the cohomology group in a problem. So you translate the problem of lifting a gamma to a Rotterbuster operator, into the problem of checking whether a certain sequence splits or not. And uh, at least in a few examples that we have uh, given, uh, this appears uh, manageable. I mean, it's, it's something that you can do in practice without trying to find the, uh, and then uh, if it splits, it gives you explicitly not a Baxter operator. And that's, uh, that's about what we want, I wanted to say. Thank you very much for <coughs> your attention. Thank you very much. Yeah. Ah, excuse me. Yeah. Yes. Let me ask you about the last slide you showed. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me share it again. Yes. Just a second. <laughs> uh, no, uh, sorry, just a second. I have to. There is a, a, a little problem. Let's see whether it works. Okay. Yes. Yes, um, you spoke a lot about the alpha equal minus a half case. Uh, yes. Is there any importance to alpha being equal to minus one? Any uh, that I'm aware of. significance to that? Uh, not that I am aware of. No. But, um, so, no, I, I think, no, well, so, uh, the, only, the only thing it's uh, that that's related to in this case, the, 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 the associated regular subgroup is the image of the left regular representation. That's it. But uh, so the, apart from that, I do that's not. I see. So it's not important that the first uh, term has a k to vanishes, zero. Power. Yes, vanishes. No, yes, you notice that this term vanishes in that case. You are perfectly right. Okay. But I don't think there is any importance. What's important uh, is that uh, since the second, uh, no, sorry. I, I, uh, uh, since uh, let me try it just a second, I'll extract the annotation once more. Uh, what's important that this does not vanish, which means mm -hmm. that uh, that the, the group generated by this uh, does intersect uh, uh, the, the the first component trivially. Okay. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and one more question regarding the overlap of this uh, theory that you mentioned uh, with uh, cryptography. Can you elaborate this a little bit? Oh, uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, so what, what kind of, of braces correspond to the cryptography? No, yes, yes. Uh, as far as I know, uh, um, it's uh, at least in the first paper I mentioned, uh, um, that's uh, the, the case when, uh, when uh, well, you know, the skew braces and braces come really from radical rings. So a posteriori radical rings are special cases uh, of, uh, of uh, braces and skew braces. Uh, so in that case, 
Okay, I have a slide if you wish on, on, on the radical rings, uh, but uh, let me tell you in, in that particular paper, which I may try well to retrieve, but no. Um, so what Francesca Dalla Volta and, and Massimiliano Sala uh, were doing is the following. We were going, we were proving that, uh, reproving actually, that uh, the group generated by the rank functions of the, the uh, advanced encrypt, uh, encryption standard uh, was, uh, was the whole alternating group. Because the, the, there is, a, in, is not a security factor in itself, but uh, it's been proved long ago that if the group generated by the rank function of a, of a cipher is too yeah. small, then there is a, 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 an attack. Uh, the, the system is, is weak. So we were trying to reprove a result that or other did be proved by others. Uh, and we wanted to go through primitive groups. Uh, in a sense, uh, uh, <laughs> allow me to say that we wanted to use the Onan Scott classification of the uh, description of uh, prim primitive groups. And so yeah. we split, uh, we first proved that the group was primitive and then we split uh, the problem in, into considering the possibilities. And one of the possibilities for the primitive groups is, is the, 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 the affine group. And, uh, and, uh, and that's uh, what led us to study the Abelian regular subgroups of the affine group, because uh, the, the, that's uh, the group of translations. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and so we characterize uh, the, the, those Abelian regular subgroups in terms of uh, radical rings, uh, which is- just, a, just in one dimension, the, the, the affine group in one dimension. No, the affine group in- uh, no, in arbitrary, uh, perhaps we use in different. Uh, so, so meaningful in one di in dimension one. The 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 extension of uh, an elementary abelian group of order p to the n, mm -hmm. where n, p is any prime and n is arbitrary by the general linear group, mm -hmm. GLMP. So the affine group uh, in any dimension, and then but let me go back quickly, and then uh, sorry, this will probably. Uh, and then uh, uh, when uh, the beginning, yes. yes, no, yes, okay. And then uh, uh, here uh, it was um, Childs and Farzo that made me notice uh, notice that uh, what we were doing for the abelian regular subgroup of the affine group really works in general uh, for the abelian subgroups. Uh, of, uh, of uh, normalizer of abelian groups. Okay, so there's nothing special about, uh, about the group you start with with being an elementary abelian. You can start uh, with, with any abelian group and then instead of the of fine group, you have the, the holomorph of it. So the extension of it by the, its, uh, its group of automorphisms. So, so these two would be a good uh, references for connections with cryptographic applications. Huh? And uh, there's no cryptography here, uh, but uh, uh, if you start, uh, uh, I, I can probably, if you wish, if you send me a message, I'm, I'm, uh, I can send you a, a list of references. But if you follow up, uh, for instance, on Matsinet, this, this paper, you'll find uh, several applications that are related mm -hmm. to this. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, there has been uh, quite some work, I, I've not been involved uh, in that, but quite some work uh, related to this. Uh, uh, so the, the yeah. using this idea of proving that certain groups uh, generated by round function are big uh, by going through primitive group for, groups first and, uh, and things like that. The, the, there is quite a body of literature, yes. Quite a bit, okay. But Thank send me a message, I'd be glad to, to send you a list of yeah. All right, very good. Uh, Andrea, the fact Oops. that uh, uh, the you, group and radical rings. you classify the uh, uh, the rotor Baxter uh, operator by the, the homology classes, uh, the same classes as the uh, extension of uh, of groups. Is it yes. uh, does it make sense? Uh, no, sorry. Please. Uh, uh, it is the same. Uh, the same classification spaces. For example, the central extension of the group. G. Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Is it meaningful? Is, is, does it make sense? Uh, no. What you it, said is the right way of of, of saying it. Yes. Uh, uh, uh -huh. 
Okay. Yes, it's the same classification space. Uh, I mean, I, oh, I think... I, it, 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 does it make sense? So uh, may, maybe some, uh, some uh, maybe the, the Rotobuster uh, operator uh, is a gamma function in some extension of groups or something, uh, something similar. Why the uh, two such problems are classified by the same homology? I oh, I have no idea. This is a meta question. Uh, I have no idea. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's I have only a very naive answer to this. Uh, don't take it too seriously. But uh, this H2 is, is, is such a, a nimble, such a flexible object uh, that it has many interpretations. And uh, I, I think it's a lucky case. Lorenzo might comment, uh, may want to comment that this has these two interpretations. Because from our point of view, and of course it's a matter of uh, taste and preferences, uh, to translate the problem uh, about finding the, the, the tabaxial operation, something for a gamma function, to checking whether the extension splits or not is a substantial improvement. I mean, it's, uh, it's a more natural question, but it's a matter of how you feel about this. Uh, okay. uh, for instance, Bardak of Olguba, if I cannot remember, showed to Lorenzo how to redo this uh, example for the, 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 the Eisenberg group, uh, of course, knowing how it works. You can, you can do it without uh, cohomology, but, uh, but uh, cohomology helped us uh, discover the example. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I mean, at least to me, but it's a very mat much a, a matter of taste and, and what you are familiar with. Uh, looking at it from the point of view of extension looks uh, natural to me. Um, but I'm, I'm, not, uh, I, I'm not going to say it is natural. It looks natural to me. <laughs> You see, in, in the context of dressing transformation, the rotobox, the operator are related uh, always with some, uh, some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, separation, some, uh, 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 some uh, a representation as a multiplication of some subgroups. So uh, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, uh, try to uh, to deform to make an extension of of uh, of uh, this algebraic uh, situation, exact exactly exact decompos decomposable group, and to make a central extension, for example, for some uh, uh, for some decomposable group. Okay, uh, I have another uh, question. Uh, could you just uh, uh, just repeat what, what was said about the brace blocks, so about the graphs of solutions? Is it some recursion procedure? Uh... Uh, okay, so let me, let me, just a second. Um, I haven't uh, given all the details of what Lorenzo and I we, uh, have done, but let me, let me show it uh, for what Koch does. Yes, okay. So the iteration procedure is here uh, in, the, in the form Koch gave it. So uh, you start with a group with an operation C dot, say, I mean, uh, and, uh, and you have a, a, an endomorphism with an abelian image. And then you define gamma to be this conjugation by this inverse. OK. And, uh, and then it showed that if you define the circle operation with, with this gamma function, you get a bis cube race. Okay, so you can exchange the order of operations here. Uh, sorry, I, I, I'm, I, I'm moving the cursor, but let's, uh, it's probably better to have the order. So you can exchange the order of operations here and you still uh, get a skew brace. But then he makes uh, a, a very interesting observation that uh, you have the psi is an endomorphism of G with the original operation and you have built a new operation. But then psi is an endomorphism also with respect to this circle operation. Moreover, the image of psi is abelian not only in the original operation, but also in the circle operation, okay? Mm -hmm. So you are exactly in the same situation you had uh, to begin with. And so you can re repeat this, except that this conjugation will be the conjugation with respect to circle. And you can do it again and again, okay? Uh -huh. okay. And it proves uh, that all these operations form a, a blaze block. That is, uh, is not only that, because uh, what we have here is that one operation with the next uh, is a bisque brace, okay? 
but uh, it, you can take any operations, any two operations in this sequence, and they, they'll form a, a bias cube race. Okay. I see. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lorenzo and I take a, a slightly different approach. Uh, that is, uh, we, we construct uh, without a, any operation procedure, uh, all, these, uh, um, uh, all these operations related to a certain uh, uh, subgroup, which quotient is abelian. And then if you wish, you can do iteration within this class. So the, you have a bigish uh, brace block, and then uh, you have several paths uh, of, of operation within it. But uh, but uh, in a sense, uh, instead of doing the iteration, we have all the the, the operation at once uh, via uh, this collection of uh, of uh, gammas and this collection of uh, of bilinear maps. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, let me repeat that. Uh, uh, at least from the experience of this paper of Filippo Spaggiari, this uh, student of mine, uh, I think it's at least fun uh, trying to study uh, these uh, brace blocks or, or these uh, normalizing graphs for, for certain classes of group, because you get uh, some really nice graphs. And um, I mean, yeah, I would recommend uh, any, anybody who has a... a, a, a with, with, uh, who likes to to construct graphs and so on uh, to 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 try and do it in uh, he did it for cyclic groups and uh, nice. they are related with some uh, some uh, famous graphs like uh, thermotohedral uh, thermotohedrons uh, some combinatorial graphs uh, uh, do you know thermotohedron oh, ah, no. Uh -huh. No, so far uh, we we just we, uh, it just uh, it was just started. I mean, I have no idea what you okay. get in general. Yeah, uh, Andrea, I'd like to thank you very much. It was very interesting. Uh, what is more more important is many really? many new questions. So I hope we will continue this discussion. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for your thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. So have a nice day. Bye. Mm -hmm.